days with Facebook today, but that's okay. So great to see everybody. I'm here. I'm here today to talk to you about one of my favorite things in the world, food. And one of my not favorite things in the world, which is anxiety. So I'm here to talk to you guys about anxiety around food. This is because next Thursday, the second, I'm sorry, Facebook is going in and out. I want to make sure that we're here all connected here. So the reason why I'm talking about anxiety around food is because next week is Thanksgiving. So I won't be talking to you guys before Thanksgiving. And a lot of people who might have some food issues might have some issues around the holidays where some things get triggered and come up and they might get nervous about all the food that's going to be coming up. If you're trying to eat healthy or if you've made a diet change, this can happen around the holidays where you feel pressure to eat things that you don't want to eat or that you've um, made different choices in your life. Um, so this is a huge, huge topic and it's an awesome one. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, what my journey has been and some, I'm going to give you three easy tips on keeping the peace with food this holiday season. And I want you to repeat after me, you're not going on a diet for New Year's, okay? No New Year's, no diets for New Year's this year. I love New Year's resolutions, but I'm not about going on diets for New Year's. So we wanna enjoy our holidays, all of, everything that it has to offer, all the food and everything without having to go on a diet for New Year's. And it can happen, I swear. So um, I should say I'm not a medical doctor. I am a therapist, I have a life coach and, um, so if you do have, you know, certain people have medical issues where they can't eat certain foods or something like that. So if you do have a, a, a medical issue, you definitely should see a doctor before making changes in your diet or anything like that. So hi, 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 Edgar. Hi, everybody. I'm here to talk about some food anxiety um, that we get around Thanksgiving that some people might get around Thanksgiving and the holidays. So um, I'm a huge holiday nerd. I love the holidays. I always have since I was little. Um, they just bring back, I just love the memories that I have of the holidays. I can think of Thanksgiving was always one of my favorites. Um, and I think of a specific Thanksgiving. I can remember the moment, I think, when I got a scary feeling around food. And I kind of laugh when I say this because I imagine myself like having a scary dream with a big, huge turkey chasing me, but that's not what it was. Um, what it was, I, so I was, I was a kid actually. Connect. I was a kid actually and I was in my parents house and my aunt and uncle who are who have passed away now they were there I love them so much comforting day I have, all my family was there it was cold outside warm inside all this food you know what everybody thinks of um, if you're from the United States what you think of with Thanksgiving and just like the perfect time you should see Prudence right now she's so cozy and sleeping when I'm talking about this so it was just the perfect time and I remember eating dip out of a bread bowl that my mom had made. It was so good. And I just remember thinking, this is the best day. You know, I'm here with my family. I was the youngest child, so I loved having my older brother and sister around. I'm here with my family. Um, I feel all the love, all the food, so good. And then it happened. I had a thought. <laughs> I had a tiny mad idea, as A Course of Miracles would say, that kept me separate. And that was, is am I fat? Is this dip making me fat? And um, that I, I don't blame my family or anything or my parents or anything. I was a sensitive kid in a world put in the society where we everybody talks about it. And what did I do with that thought once I had that thought? Delicious dip. Just stuff it down. So I stuffed it down with more delicious dip. And um, that was the first time I remember feeling out of control and feeling like scared. Like I cannot stop eating this. So that is a horrible feeling and I never want anybody to have to have that feeling, but I'm going to try to co coach you through some of those times, some of those, if you, if you ever have that feeling, I'm going to try to coach you through this a little bit today. It started me down an odd relationship with food where it's much too bigger, you know, than one vlog to talk about, but I can say that the, that the holidays tended to trigger this and it was kind of a pattern that involved getting excited, eating a lot of food on the holidays, um, eating too much food, being sick, and then hating myself the next day and vowing to go on a strict diet and never eat any junk food again or whatever. Okay, so that was kind of the pattern. And it's just miserable. It's not fun. So I remember one Thanksgiving. So I love shopping. So I love food. I love shopping. Love the holidays. I'm probably driving everybody crazy talking about this. Um, I'm just, I shouldn't say that because I, um, Never mind, we're gonna, that's just a whole other topic. Anyway, so I do love food, I love shopping, I love the holidays, and 
my mom and I, one Thanksgiving, this was in my 20s, we had decided to get up and go shopping the next day, you know, Black Friday. And I was like, I remember getting up and I was so sick. I had eaten so much food the day before that I was so sick. I could barely go shopping with my mom. Finally, I decided, oh no, I love food. I'm not going to pick one or the other. I'm going to pick both. My husband would not be, I choose to have both, <laughs> shopping and food. So I found a way to do it where I can eat and have anything I want during the holiday season, but I also am not going to be sick. And so I can also enjoy all the other wonderful things the holiday season has to offer. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to start now with three steps. This is, there's are three simple steps. I'm going to repeat them quite a bit because I want them to be really drilled in your head so that when you go to that Thanksgiving dinner or whatever it is that you have these steps and get out a pencil and paper, write them down. Okay, because these are awesome steps that have really helped me. So the first step is check in with your higher power. Now this might sound a little cheesy, so just stay with me here, just stay with me, checking in with your higher power. Um, Marion Williamson, you know, she, something that she suggests that we do every day is that we meditate, obviously, and we send everyone that we're gonna meet that day love. So we send everyone we're gonna meet that day, everyone we know we're gonna meet, everyone that we don't know we're gonna meet, we zap them with the energy of love, okay? So we do that in the morning when we wake up. Now, most importantly, on the day of Thanksgiving or on a day when you're having a party, you want to do this. I don't care if you're having three million people over, even more if you're having three million people over, should you at least, at least five minutes to yourself to in silence. And I want you to send all the people that you're going to have at your house or that you're going to see if you're going to somebody else's house love. But I also, I want you to take this one step further. Okay. This sounds cheesy. I want you to send food. Okay. So I remember one time watching, um, John and Yoko, John Lennon and Yoko Ono on some like food network or food channel where they were into like the micro, I think it was the microbiotic diet. And they were like, send the food, you know, send your food, your love. And I remember being like, they were such hippies, you know, like, okay. <laughs> but this is true, it works. So you send the food that you're gonna eat that day love. You can feel it. I want you to send it to your food. And what this does is it really helps you to have a better relationship with your food. Instead of having it where you're fighting it, this is going to have a relationship where it's going to soften the energy between you and your food. The, a good, an awesome mantra is, I love my food and my food loves me. And this helps it not to be such a where you are fighting it, okay? I'm sorry, I'm a little bad again, so I'm hoping this is working for you guys on Facebook. Um, we'll see. I'm going to put this on YouTube later. Instagram one to put on YouTube because Facebook is really giving me problems. So anyway, I'm just going to let it run and see what happens. What we're doing is our first step to making peace with food this holiday season is we're sending, we're connecting with our higher power. So we're sending food, the food that we're going to eat that day, the food that we're not going to eat that day, we're sending it all loves. And then the second step to connect to the higher power is, this is something else that might sound a little strange, it's something that I do daily is you ask your higher power what you should eat. You check in with your higher power. And I wouldn't necessarily ask what I should eat, but what I what I would ask on these days is, should I eat it now or later? Just keep that in your head, now or later. You check in with your higher power, should I eat this now or later? And your higher power, it might surprise you. Sometimes it might be a piece of apple pie that your higher power says, eat it now. It might be this, some healthy thing that your higher power says, eat it later, don't eat it now. Okay, or it might be the other way around. I don't know really connecting with your higher power. Well, your higher power is not going to be mean. It's not going to say, you idiot, you fat pig, you know, you should know, you should never eat this. Your higher power is going to be a voice that's gentle, it's going to be a voice that's loving, and it's not going to be a voice that makes you feel guilty. So make sure that you check in with your higher power. Should I eat this now or later? Okay, and so say whatever it is. Sometimes you're not going to be perfect, so you're not going to always listen to it. And you're, don't worry, it's okay. So just get back to it. So sometimes your higher power might say, eat that later, now. Okay, fine. So what you can do is kind of make a deal and say, okay, I'm going to wait 15 minutes. I'll wait, eat it in 15 minutes. What might change, what might happen is that 15 minutes might pass and you might be able to listen to your higher power a little bit better. It's just about developing this relationship with the higher power and also a space between you and whatever you're eating so that you have a little, feel that you have a little bit more control over it and that you feel like, um, you feel like you're in control. 
So it's not just an automatic thing. It kind of wakes you up from that automatic thing, that automatic habit that you might have of just eating without thinking. It's like taking a breath or whatever you need to do to develop some space between you and the food. You can still have any food that you want. Just connect with your higher power and ask them now or later, okay? And I don't care what your higher power. It could be the universe. It could be the God. It could be angels. It could be whatever it is. It could be your higher power is what you call it. So whatever it is, we're going to connect with the higher power. That's the first step. The second step is enjoy your food, okay? So I don't, when you, any type of eating disorder, whether it's, not eating enough or whether it's overeating, any type of eating disorder, any type of disorder enjoying your food, okay? So you think about it. If you're eating too much and you're eating everything in sight and you're feeling sick, you're not enjoying your food. If you're not letting yourself eat, then you're not enjoying your food. You, Your homework is to enjoy your food. How awesome is that and how simple is that? That means chewing your food. That means eating food that tastes good. Have you ever said to yourself, like, that, that hit the spot? When you Usually when you wait until you're hungry, so make sure that your food is tasting good. And if it doesn't taste good, don't eat it. You know, Don't let Aunt Bess guilt you into eating her green jello. You are an adult. You can make these decisions. You know, Sometimes when we go back home with our families, we don't, kind of feel like we get taken out of that adult role. You're an adult. You can make a decision about what you what you put into your body and what you don't put into your body. So make sure that whatever you eat, that you enjoy it. I'll never forget last Thanksgiving, my husband and I, we were too full to have dessert on, you know, when we were there at my family party. So we took some home with us, got this dessert and we ate it and it was so good. It's, it was just like the definition of hitting the spot. So we waited and we ate it later. And Second step is enjoy your food. And then the third step, and I want everybody to say this with me, and I want to, I think we should say with a little bit of attitude, I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. Okay? <laughs> so I can eat whatever I want, whatever I want. Be a snob about it. Tell yourself this because you can. You can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. And you know what the perfect thing is to eat for your body. So um, here's why I want you to do this because. I used to get into the habit of, I, and my husband used to do this too, on like Thanksgiving Day, you know, you, it's, you're like, okay, I'm going to eat everything in sight and tomorrow I'm going to go on that diet. Tomorrow I'm going to go on a strict diet. And what happens is you're miserable both days because the day you're trying to eat everything in sight and you're sick, you feel sick because you've eaten too much and then tomorrow you are miserable because you can't eat what you, you know, because you've put yourself down these restrictions. So I want you to say, I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. It doesn't mean that you are going to eat everything in sight. It means that you are going to eat whatever you want, whenever you want. What what happens there? Hi, Aunt Jude. So nice to see you guys. What happens there <clears throat> when you tell yourself, I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want, you are, again, creating a better relationship with food. You are creating, giving yourself some space between you and the food. And you might say, Okay, I want this apple pie, but I'm too full right now, but I'm going to save it and eat it for breakfast. Doesn't that sound great? Apple pie for breakfast sounds perfect, by the way. I'm going to have to try that. So you might say, okay, I'm going to eat this apple pie for breakfast. <clears throat> you hold on to it. You don't eat it that day. You're going to eat it the next day. You might eat it for breakfast and totally enjoy it. It might be delicious, or you might wake up and decide, I don't want to eat it for breakfast. But do you see how you're kind of putting some space between you and the food, and you're not eating everything all at once. It's perfect. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go over these three steps. Check in with your three steps to having peace and harmony with food during the holiday season and not going on a diet for New Year's. Love you too. I, it's nice to see everybody. Okay. So three steps to, um, eh, three steps to not going on a diet for New Year's and developing, having a peaceful relationship with food during the holidays. The first step, check in with your higher power. <clears throat> So this means sending your food, your love that day. This means asking your higher power if you should eat now or later. Next, second step is enjoy your food. Enjoy your food. I am telling